Hi, welcome to this week's uh, episode of The Wellbeing Show. I'm your guest, Noel, and we've got some amazing people on today. And I was talking to them just before the show. I'm a bit of a fanboy of this place. It's um, H&P Grendon and Spring Hill. And I better say there's Spring Hill, otherwise I'll get in trouble. Um, I've got the governor of Grendon and Spring Hill with me and also one of the uh, prison staff from uh, Grendon itself. Um, Grendon is... Um, I think it's the UK's only, but I'll be putting my place if I'm wrong. I think it's the UK's only therapeutic community prison. Um, and it's surrounded by an open prison called Spring Hill. And I visited it in my youth, which was a very, very long time ago now. But I remember being blown away by it when I went there with a theatre company when I was 23 or 24, I think. It was a very unique experience. Um, and it is a very unique prison. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, please WhatsApp them to me, 07506 319 745. Um, I should say that you can only see me if you're watching this um, on a video. It's simply because um, it, we're protecting people's identities, um, simply because it's about confidentiality um, and it's about safety. Um, and so that's enough from me. So do you want to introduce yourself, folks? We've got the governor first, maybe introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, so my name's Olivia and I'm the governor of Grendon and Spring Hill. So it's right. two separate prisons, but I'm, I'm the governing governor of both prisons, so I sit across both. Brilliant. Welcome. And we have a member of your staff from Grendon with us as well. I know all. I'm Anna. Um, I'm a specialist officer. Um, I work on one of the communities in Grendon. Super. Thanks so much for coming in and making time in what has got to be a very busy schedule. I really appreciate you both taking time um, and either of you can jump in and answer these questions but um i'm just tell us a little bit about why grendon is uh unique uh, in your sort of opinion um what makes it different and um if you've got experience of working in, in other prisons maybe as well you can tell us what's different about it uh, either one of you can jump in okay so i'll answer that first of all so um it's the only um whole prison in the country that operates as democratic communities so the different thing about grendon is that each community within the prison operates as a separate democratic community okay. so each community um, has their own therapeutic values they have their own constitution um, the staff teams that work within that community only work with those prisoners in that community right. they're quite a small community so um, the main communities are about between 40 to 45 prisoners. Yeah. Um, we have an assessment unit, which takes up to about 40 prisoners. Yeah. Um, so prisoners self-refer to come to Grendon. So mm. they refer themselves um, with the support of their staff in their, the prison they're in. Then we do an assessment prior to them coming. And then when they come to Grendon, they are on the assessment unit for between three to six months before they get allocated a community. So that's very different to what you would get in a, in a different type of prison. Yeah, and, and maybe people, I mean, because I, I was telling you before the show, I've got a sort of background as a psychotherapist working forensics, which means working with people um, who've been sent to hospital rather than prison. I also got a background in working in prisons. It is unusual um, to hear, and I think probably unique to hear, that um, uh sort of prisoners want to come to Grendon there isn't I can't think of that many places where prisoners want to go um am I right in thinking that's unusual in, in it, it is unusual um but also some of them do have it as part of their sentence plan that mm. they they would benefit from from therapy yeah. so the other different thing about our work here is we're a co-commission service right. so I have um, NHS funding and OPD funding as well as HMPPS funding so every bed is treated as a clinical bed. So people come here for treatment to undergo psychotherapy. Yeah. Um, so they're coming here for a very for a very specific reason um, as part of their sentence plan, as part of their sentence. And overall, it's to reduce the risk of their reoffending. Yeah. So we'll come to the, the idea of sort of therapeutic interventions as part of 
um, criminal justice in a second, because people may be confused about what does that mean? Um, and we can talk about what that is. But just to sort of hone down on this, because I'm a bit, bit of a nerd and want to understand this a bit. Grendon isn't also, or is it also a psychiatric hospital? So it's definitely not a psychiatric hospital. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it never was actually. Um, so it's not a psychiatric hospital. Um, the staff that work here are either uh, prison staff um, and we also employ as part of that, we have clinical staff. So we have prison employees, psychologists, we have psychotherapists and we have therapy managers right. um, and also prison officers who are specialist officers also deliver and facilitate psychotherapy, which is right. unusual or different to what you might have in, a diff in another prison. Yeah, and that's the sort of thing that I'm I'm intrigued in that, and I'll come back to why I'm intrigued in that, because of this thing about um, this therapeutic community or community approach. Um, yeah. it's communities, they're, they're wing-based, as it were. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Um, and, Olivia, go on, carry, carry on, Anne. I was say that Olivia mentioned there was there's a four communities um, yeah. which obviously run like their own... Um, their own community we also have the assessment but we also have a 20 bed unit which is tc plus so it's obviously a, a community for people with learning difficulties as well wow okay is that a, a, an enclosed community so only mm -hmm. people with learning disabilities are part yes. of it yes yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so I people are assessed um so people who go onto that unit have already been assessed yeah. to have um specific learning difficulties um so they wow. need a slightly different approach to psychotherapy, yeah. Yeah. a bit less intensive, and the, the regime on there is slightly different. Yeah. The other interesting thing about Grendon is we don't only do have psychotherapy, we also have complementary therapies that run alongside it. So we have core creative therapy, so we have art therapy, yeah. psychodrama, and music therapy, yeah. um, as yeah. well as other parts of the regime where prisoners can engage in education and work um, in the afternoons when they're not engaged in therapy. Right. And then Spring Hill is an open prison that's sort of physically, if I remember rightly, located around the outside. Mm -hmm. of the prison. Is that right? Yeah, it's not around the prison, so it's opposite right. the prison. Uh, opposite the prison. So Spring Hill is an open prison, so that provides a resettlement function for prisoners who are, uh, have either been in custody a long time or who are deemed suitable to be in open conditions. So at Spring Hill, we we we're the reintegration back into the community part of the sentence. So I've got prisoners over there who work out as well as go uh, um, as also have home leave and also have uh, right. time with their families in the community. So it's a very different prison to Grendon. They're, they're completely they're completely different, actually. You can be yeah. more different. Yeah. And so the the idea of an open prison is to um, sort of gradually reintegrate somebody back into their community of origin. Is that right? Yeah. So it's a transitional approach so that. So as prisoners are coming towards the end of their sentence, right. um, that they have time in open conditions to get them ready um, for release to ho hopefully so they can leave with settled accommodation and settled work um, and they can have improved family ties so they can have time with their families in the community as well. So reassessment prisons and um, open prisons are a really important part of the prison sentence. Yeah, because obviously if you've been in a very highly institutionalised environment where decisions have been made for you and you're suddenly yeah. released into an environment where you have to make all your decisions again, that may well be very overwhelming, right? It can be really overwhelming. And so some prisoners, even for staff actually, when you've worked in a closed prison and you go to an open prison as a member of staff, it can feel quite weird because you've got mm -hmm. people walking around and yeah. people aren't picked up anymore. So staff go through a similar transition when they move from closed to open prisons as prisoners do. Yeah. Um, many prisoners, it can be quite destabilising initially because yeah. they have such control of their lives um, and suddenly nobody's unlocking their door anymore, they've got their own key, they have to make their way down to get their food, down to the dining hall, they have to make appointments without yeah. anyone taking them up. Um, in terms of their, their kind of how they manage their lives, it can be, it can be quite challenging actually. So um, we also um, in Spring Hill have what's called a pair service. So okay. It's OPD funded, so they work with the more complex men um, who need more support in managing their emotional behaviours, their mental health, their physical health. Um, and actually, that's a very it's an integrated service, but they work with up to about 25 prisoners um, in, a, in a more sort of supported therapeutic way than than you might have not. You wouldn't have necessarily had that, you know, a few years ago. What's OPD, just so I know? 
Um, it's the personality disorder. Um, so it's right. the um, it's the we call it well we call it it's offender person. It's, it says it stands for offender personality disorder. Right. But it's a separate it's a separate kind of part of the organisation. So it's all the OPD um, people that work in that field. Um, they work very closely with us because they commission um, the service mm. that we deliver at Brendan on at Spring Hill. Um, and they work, obviously, with prisoners who fit into that service. So can I ask a question of you, Anna, do you mind? Um, have you always been in Grendon or have you worked in other prisons? Yeah, um, I've been at Grendon quite a long time. Previously, when I joined the job, I joined in a local prison. Um, yeah. and I was there for three years and then I got the opportunity um, to come to Brendan on secondment. Um, I came here for about six months and then the governor at the time asked me if I would like to transfer permanently, which I took the opportunity to and then I've been here ever since. Wow. I'm just intrigued. Why did you want to join the prison service? What was what, what attracted you? I don't mean that to joke. I'm genuinely interested. So for me, initially, um, I left college and I was in I was in catering and there was a couple of um, incidents where I'd, I'd lost my job through the contract had been um, given to another company. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted kind of like a job where, you know, I had a, where it could be career, um, good pension and yep. good money. And I went to the job centre and I saw an advert for the prison service and I thought, Oh, okay, I like that. I might go in into the prison service for those reasons, but also to take my um, my uh, what I'd learned, my uh, catering, to be um, a catering officer. But uh, I didn't. Right. I stayed in because that's what I enjoy. And obviously, even after the amount of years that I've had in um, ground, the ground floor is where I like to be. Right. What What is it that you like about it, Anna? Because I, I think a lot of people might be listening thinking, I, I couldn't imagine doing that as a job. It must be really, really hard work and frightening and difficult. What what do you get out of it, do you think? I think um, job satisfaction. Yeah. I think um, initially when I joined the um, when I joined the prison service, I was in a local. Um, I couldn't build kind of like um, professional relationships with the men because they weren't in there for very long. Yeah. I wasn't a part of their rehabilitation. So, you know, I thought, well, you know, that's that's where I would like to be, is kind of like to be part of um, the man's journey, um, to see them kind of like, you know, succeed and yeah. try something different, do therapy and, yeah, move on and rehabilitate themselves. Had you known much about therapy before you joined, Brendan, or was it just like, what is this weird stuff they're doing? No, I didn't. I didn't know anything about it actually. Right. Think so, um, yeah, when I came and I, and I was put straight onto a community, and then yeah, that's where I've, I think I, I learned from the on the ground floor. And your boss, the governor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I I started as a prison officer. So, um, I uh, was I went to university. I did, did a degree in international relations actually. Did you? And um, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. Right. And I came home from in my last year and I saw an advert in the paper for prison officer. So I thought, well, I don't know, that sounds all right. Don't know anything about it. <laughs> I went, and did some, uh, went to a service station and did some tests to, that you had to do in some role plays. And they asked me where I wanted to work. And I didn't actually know where any prisoners were particularly. Yeah. So I just circled two that were in my county. Um, and I went for a visit and I'd never been in a prison before. And I just said, can I come for six months and, I, and then I'll get a proper job? And they said, yes. Um, and that's how I joined the prison service, and that was 26 years ago. So, yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, so I was a prison officer for four years actually before I then started kind of working my way up um, into doing different jobs in different prisons, and and I've ended up back here at Grendon and Spring Hill as the governor. I had worked here previously actually. I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but funnily enough, um, what, was the first... First, what was your first experience then of coming to Grendon and Spring Hill, but in particular Grendon, I guess. I didn't really, I didn't know anything about it. And I'd worked at a prison that was six miles away and I didn't have no clue what, yeah. Grendon, what they did at Grendon. But I actually worked in Spring Hill first. Right. So I worked in the open side. But when you're duty governor, you have to work across both prisons. Okay. So yeah. I'd, I'd come into Grendon and, 
you know, do my rounds and go onto the wings and stuff. And that's where I started to um, really see that how living in a community and how people have to learn how to yes. get along with each other. They have to learn how to compromise. They have to learn how to, you know, have arguments, but then be able to resolve it. Yeah. Um, it's like living in a family, but in a very intensive mm. way. Because yeah. within the community, each prisoner is also assigned to a group and they will li- they they do all their therapeutic work in that group and they can't change groups. So they'll work within that group for the whole time they're here within that community. So you're it's very difficult actually. Therapy is not is not an easy option by any stretch. You don't have uh, to make. Yes, but what's been re- what I've really enjoyed is over the years people I've known at Grendon who I've then seen later on in different prisons, um, you can really see the difference in how they approach life yeah. and how they manage themselves. And for a lot of prisoners, when they come to Grendon, the first 18 months is normally really difficult and really tough. And then there's always a bit of a light bulb moment mm-hmm. at some point where they go, I-, I get it now. And they can see where their lives have gone wrong or, or their lives have gone right or where they're, you know, where things have happened to them in the past and why they've made the choices they've made, where they've ended up committing, you know, a, you know, a quite a serious offence, okay. um, which most people here have done that. Yeah, yeah. So let's, that, that's a good point at which to discuss this issue. So when I was first trained into forensic work as a, as a clinician, I'd already qualified. My first job was in a forensic ward up in Scotland. And um, sort of very much sort of I was given the clear instruction that the, the focus of the work was public safety, which I think you mentioned earlier on. Uh, you didn't use that term, but the idea is that you're working to make somebody safer in the community upon release. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. so that's, so the whole work we do here is all about reducing risk. Yeah. And reducing the risks that they present when they come here. So, I mean, Anna can talk a bit more about um, the work that is done around that because um, she works on the wings. But ultimately, what you want is prisoners to leave here less likely to to, to reoffend. And yeah. actually, all of the evidence that we have and the research that's been done around Grendon is that um, the reduced the, the reoffending rate is far lower for prisoners that have undergone intensive therapy than yeah. if they hadn't. Yeah. So um, Anna can talk a bit more about that because they get set goals, don't they? And they they have therapeutic targets and. Tell us, about, Anna, about this push towards safety and what that involves for, say, a prototypical. Say, if I turned up tomorrow, mm. what would happen if I was a, a if I managed to get through that referral process? I was a prisoner, and then what would you take me through? What would you um, introduce? Yeah, so the do. first thing which people or the men which come to kind of like Brendan is kind of like I think it kind of like shocks them because they'll come into reception and the reception officer will shake their hand and ask them for their first name. Yes. You know, and then the, you know us as prison staff will introduce ourselves by first name, and I think that's where that's where we're trying to kind of like break down those barriers with them. And how is that different from say? going to another prison can just so say that people... my experience from when i was at the local prison you didn't use first name terms yeah you know so um and that's what i was going to say my first kind of like shock was when i came to for a, um to have a look round at grendon yeah i walked through the um the gates and there was um the po at that time they were principal officers yeah. and this um uh prisoner just said all right john how you doing i was like john Ooh, I'm there saying, sir, yes, sir, no, sir. Um, but that that was different, and I think that does work because you know they see you as it's kind of like human beings. They see past the uniform. That that's what we're trying to do, and right. exactly the same is not being non uh, being non judgmental against them. They've committed yeah. something you know quite serious, but they're not behaving that way now. We need to see the person to get the work done. And so then what would happen? I'm, I'm greeted with first names and I'm a bit yeah. shocked by so, this because I've been through another system. And then what happens to me? So th- th- they'll, they'll be in reception, they'll go through all their property and then they'll be escorted down to the assessment unit. Yeah. Um, and then then they'll be introduced to the staff, they'll be shown where their, um, where their cell is, where they'll spend a period of 
you know, like Olivia said, three to six months there. Um, on that particular night, they have um, a first night induction. So because we've got kind of like night sand, they'll go through all the system. Night sand, they'll go through the fire procedures. Yeah. Um, they'll give the, um, the prisoner a phone call home. Um, to just to, so to allow them to elect, you know, let their family know that they've arrived safely, and then, yeah, and then it's kind of like getting on with the work. Then it is. Yeah. Then it's so then straight into, into really work. therapy. Yeah. yeah, and so they what the work involves. What does that involve? What well, on, the, on the assessment unit, they um, they obviously have to go. They'll have a clinical assessment, and they'll go back into their history um, of their offending and um, and how they've ended up where they've ended up. But they also practice doing therapy, so they'll go into small groups. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an introduction to therapy, so they can they they know if it's for them or not, and whether whether they can work with us and we can work with them. So um, for some prisoners, actually, therapy is not for them. Um, so, but also we deselect as well. So so sometimes in the assessment unit, we'll we'll know that actually we can't work with somebody for a particular reason, or it's not going to work for them. Yeah. So there yeah. is there is a period of time in the assessment unit where prisoners do go back to their um they're sending prison and they don't actually make it onto a community so around um 80 of prisoners that come to grendon go on to a community and go on to to complete therapy but around 20 percent um they either deselect themselves or we deselect de them for a number of reasons yeah difference between the assessment um unit and the residential uh wings is they will only talk about the here and now they won't go into um, depth about their childhood, about their offence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. So that will why wait. Is, why is that? What what's that about? Because I think um, for me, it's kind of like opening somebody up, and they might not succeed through the assessment period, right? You know, and then you've also got people. Um, you might have people there who are being convicted of sexual offences. Yeah, yeah. And um, as as you know, Grendon, you know, we are mixed. You know, people with sexual offences do end up going to uh, yeah. normal, you know, the other wings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, the case, population in that, in that sense. And just so that people know, generally those types of populations are kept separate in other prisons. Yes. Yeah. So it's um it's integrated here. So, yes. Um, so around 20 percent of our prisoners um, have uh, have been convicted of sexual offences, but the rest yeah. haven't been mm. integrated. Yeah, um, but I suppose it's important as well to think about how the staff manage all of this. Yeah. So um, at Grendon, all of the staff who have training to be um, psychotherapy to do to deliver sort of facilitate psychotherapy. Really? The prison, officers, the prison officer specialists have they they go on training. We also um, encourage them to do some other professional development as well. And there's other courses they can do. Um, they also have every week they have sensitivity. Sensitivity every week as a group, and then we have monthly supervision, which is an individual supervision with our um, work. So tell me about sensitivity. Is that a sort of contact group where you're talking about your feelings as staff? Um, yes, yes. So we will meet. Um, we will meet once a week. Um, sometimes, as um, uniform staff, we might not be able to attend because of shifts, because of rest days, but we do get together once a week which includes a multidisciplinary team. So it's the link therapist, yeah. psychologist, um, the band for non-uniform facilitators and obviously uniform staff. And it's kind of like where you can share um, things that you might be struggling with within your group with maybe a particular, you know, prisoner on the wing. It yeah. could be that there might be some dynamics within the staff team. Yeah. So it gives you a space where you can air and ha have other people then to help and support you to get through that. Mm. And are you and also, in these groups if you say I'm really angry with somebody or they've really upset me? What sort of response would you get? Well, you get a, you get a lot of support, right? Yeah, from other people, and then other people will share kind of like they they might have similar kind of like feelings to you, or they might kind of like say, "Well, have you looked at it this way? Is it you know?" Do you think it could be um, you need to look at it another way? So that that's where you get kind of like um, good support from each other, mm. you know. And I have to say that, you know, the teams that work on the wings are very close. They're very oh. contained. You know, it's a very safe place. You know, we do look after each other. Yeah. And the other important part around that is that 
um, all staff, um, both uniform staff or clinical staff, have to have supervision in order to carry yeah. on facilitating groups. So they have to attend a certain yeah. set number of supervision sessions with their whoever their supervisor is yeah. um, to be able to carry on delivery. So if they if they don't attend those sessions or they um, three months yeah. uh, they can't go more than three months without yeah. having a supervision session. But is um, supervision the same as line management, or is it? Yeah. Like, no, well, no, it's completely yeah. different. It's completely different. Yes. So it's different. Can it's they do supervision then? Yeah, it's clinical supervision. Okay. Um, and so it keeps the staff safe in terms of how they're managing themselves yeah. and how they're able then to support um, the prisoners that are going through therapy. Um, so actually the support staff here is, you know, really good in terms of that, that that's available as well as all the other things that we have available for all prison staff. But at Grendon specifically, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be able to run without supervision, sensitivity and some of the, you do, well, all of that really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And also I, like we, I have a counsellor on site as well. Yeah. Well, I like that word sensitivity. The reason I like it is because institutions in general can be quite brutalizing and in mm. particular um, institutions that are dealing with people who've had very brutal life experiences such as the guys that you're dealing with and you can end up this secondary brutalization where you're numbing out and you get traumatized i guess that's the thought there that yeah. you need to remain sensitive as a human being is that right yeah so what we have to try and do is make sure we don't normalize um abnormal behavior yeah um, and so for some for the staff who are working every day in the communities it is very intensive you know the relationships are very strong they get to know each other very well you know they're um they're on they're they're turned on all the time if that makes sense so the yeah. the, prison, the prison staff that that um, facilitate the therapy they are also there to look after the prisoners and keep them safe so they're there at weekends yeah. they're there in the evening they take part in social activity with them outside of the core therapy work but the, the prison staff actually are there all the time it's so a really have... complex role yes yeah and it, it's very challenging the very challenging. Very of that role are just yeah. mind-boggling so tell me how do you manage that i mean it's just because i i guess i imagine that when you're say facilitating a group or you're a member of a group that's been facilitated by somebody and some difficult issues come up that touch upon you personally maybe you've had something similar yourself like you're then at work while also having this deeply personal experience I mean that that's complicated stuff right yeah I mean we talk about um sensitivity we talk about supervision but also what we do is is when we facilitate a group in the morning so our groups run from nine o'clock till half past ten um the prisoners then will have their own uh, feedback so you know um even though we've got five individual groups they will go into a room and they will feed back to the rest of the other small groups of what happened in that group right then um the staff while well, that's happening the staff will then go and write up their kind of like notes of what happened in the group but we've also um at the end of it uh, at quarter past 11 we do then have a star feedback right. so we will then be able to share if we have any concerns if anything kind of like came up for us in that you know group small group that we've done we can share it at that time yeah and i guess that's also really important to reassert the professional identity as well that the the purpose of you being there is as a professional to help people sort of um, progress in their own personal journey right mm -hmm. Yeah, and I suppose what's different about the way we work at Grendon is that it's a it's a multidisciplinary approach. Yeah, you know, so we have operational staff and non-operational staff and clinically trained staff all working together on a community as part of one team yeah. to to deliver psychotherapy to you know two two men in therapy who may be in the prison for the, for up to four years. I mean, the minimum of time is eighteen months, but really most people need to be in therapy for between 18 months and up to four years. I say up to four years, some of them go on a bit longer, but actually yeah. there's also a risk if it goes on too long. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, people can regress. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, what you really want is that prisoners then move on from here, um, either to open conditions, um, mm -hmm. you know, or back in back, and they continue to progress in their, in their sentence. Obviously, yeah. you know, they're coming through to do a piece of work, but, but it is really important to keep the staff, the staff functioning well. So, like we have the same as any prison, we have a care team. Um, we've also got trained um, trim practitioners. So Claire yeah. is a trim practitioner. 
so we so she can actually do assessments for staff if they've undergone like a serious trauma. incident or a trauma yeah. um right. you know we have um pam assist i've also got a counselor on site every two weeks so people can book in a session yeah. like a receptive practice session so there is a lot um to support sort of well-being of staff right. but you can't kind of get away from the fact it is it's a more intensive way of working than yeah. you might have in a different like at spring hill for example my the prison officers in spring hill are having a very different day to anna yeah. yes yeah. <laughs> i can imagine yeah. but but it's it's interesting as well because there's a purpose to that intensity right? yeah and there's a real also, outcome. Go on, carry on. There are real outcomes, you know. Um, and when tell you me see... about some of the outcomes. We touched briefly upon them. I've heard a figure saying that the um, the reoffending rate of people who've been through the program at Grendon is as low as twenty percent. Is that right? Yeah, that's what the research tells us. Right. Um, but we know from the contact we have with prisoners that have left Grendon, or we've come across in the system, that even if they're only here for a short time. And even if they don't make it through the assessment, there, there still is an impact on how on their thinking, on their thoughts and behaviour, how they interact with people. You know, some of the people we have in are obviously very damaged. And this yeah. might be the first time they've had a positive interaction with somebody in authority. Yeah. But they're a, a good outcome, you know. And, and some of what we do here is also about role modelling, yeah. how to have boundary relationships mm -hmm. with people who are professional. Yeah, you know, it's, it's still a professional relationship, mm. but and it has to be very boundaried. But we can role model that, and prisoners who come to Brendan who've had very difficult experiences either in the prisoner state or in their own lives, this might be the first time they've experienced something very different, that's yeah. very supportive and more of a community feel than they may have ever have had in their lives. It reminds me of this idea of asset-based community development. Um, which is uh, because these guys hopefully are going to go back to their communities, aren't they? But they'll go yeah. back as very different people that left. Well, we hope so. Well, <laughs> the evidence seems to suggest they do, right? Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? But there's, I mean, Grendon is interesting. I think people won't know this. It's the most researched prison on the planet. Mm. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's been so much research done on the sort of strength of your outcomes um, uh, that it, it's quite surprising how few people know about it in a sense but I guess it's a it's a niche market for this sort of research and um, I'm just aware of time and I know Anna's got to get back to um, the wing soon you've got about a minute to go um, it, it sort of would you go and work anywhere else, Anna, or is this it? Are you sort of bought into this? And if if you are, why? Um, honestly, no. Right. I wouldn't go. Uh, I've, I've been here, I am going to say, 30 years. Yeah. So, um, and I've been in the prison service, obviously, 33 years. Um, I just couldn't see myself working anywhere else. Yeah. I just, you know, I come in... Um, and I enjoy the job, and I go home, and I know that I've done the best I can. Brilliant. I mean, it's extra. It's mind blowing. It really is. You obviously were there when I visited, as when I was twenty something. <laughs> oh, no. you were. I don't. I don't remember you, but you definitely. You've been there thirty years. Yeah. Um, it was less than 30 years ago that I was there, so you must have been there. <laughs> and she's still here. And I'm still yeah. here. Yeah. That says it all. That's incredible. Look, Anna, I'm going to let you go back to the wing. I'm going to finish off mm -hmm. with um, the governor, if that's all right with you. Thank you so much for making time. No, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I well, mate, you. I'm just a fan. I really am. I'm a total fanboy of the work that you're doing. And and my team as well, when I told, I told you when I told them about it, they're all just can't wait to watch this episode. Uh, there's a lot of love for you lot out here, I'm telling you. Oh, that's lovely to hear. And, yeah, and hopefully Anna can share that when she goes back to the wing. Definitely. Yeah. I'm going to share the love, Noel. Yeah. Share the love. All right. Nice one, mate. Have a good, have a good second. Uh, Let's finish off. So, um, I mean, it, you know, wh why is it that we don't know more about this, do you think? Um, I think that some of it is because um, we need to get better at actually promoting what we do across okay. the whole service again. Because we have to keep reminding people because people move jobs or leave or 
you know, I think sometimes, um, so when Grendon first started, we were the only prison doing this. Yeah. Over time, there are TCs in other prisons now, and there's psychologically informed environments in prison, so there are pipes. Um, there's other, um, there's other like, um, you know, enabling environments that have happened in other prisons. So I think over time, we're, you know, we, we aren't the only show in town, I suppose is what I'm trying to say, but we're still the only prison that operates as a fully, um, you know, democratic community, as a therapeutic community. Um, and I just think like the Centre of Excellence for the training yeah. in other centres. Yeah. So staff come and train with you and then they go. Yeah, to they train here, yeah. So we train um, TC, we train staff that work in TCs across the country here as well. Same thing, a therapeutic community or? Yeah, so we're, and we're a national resource. So we take prisoners from all over the country as well. Yeah. Um, so I think some of it is just about us uh, making sure that we're promoting what we do and we're attracting people to come and work here that, that want to work in this type of environment. Um, and also we're getting the prisoners coming through that, that need this really intensive work. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, they, we do reduce reoffending. We are going to reduce the number of victims and we are going to keep the public safe. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, a pro-social yeah, human. A yeah. human is less likely to do something that hurts another human being. That's it. Yeah. And it just takes time. You know, it takes time to break down those barriers. It, it just takes, you know, it, the work is very intensive and it's not an easy option for people. And I think some prisoners come here because they think, um, you know, it's going to be easy and it, it, and it isn't. It's probably some of the hardest time they'll ever do yeah. because um, they're putting themselves in a room with people and having to talk about their deepest, darkest secrets and also face up to what they've done, you know, and actually take responsibility for what they've, the harm they've caused in their lives. Yeah. Um, you know, and staff are here to to support that work, but they also need to be supported as well. Yeah. I, it's it's extraordinary. Um, and I'm just so excited that you've come on today. We have to finish, I'm afraid, because we're just out of time. Um, I, I mean, you know, uh, I was blown away as a young person going into Grendon. I'm still blown away as an old geezer who's over there with the work it's quite extraordinary you've managed to keep it going all these years um it also it seems to be really important that we get a message out to people that um, there's a way of doing prisons which is really effective um and can contribute really positively to society um and we can make society a better place and you folks are doing that right um, so yeah, I think that I think that people who want to come and work in the prison service, there's every prison has a different role to play. So we not every prison can be a Grendon because that wouldn't work yeah. either. Yeah. Um, and so every prison has their their part to play in, in the prisoner journey. Um, but actually, for staff who want to come and work at Grendon, um, it's a different type of experience, and it's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, but um, but actually, um, I think that it's just a really you know interesting, varied job that we do. Um, you know, I've certainly came, I've, I've come across people here that, you know, you wonder how on earth they've managed to to, to kind of get through their life at all, actually. Um, but, but, you know, we're all just real people just doing our jobs and we're, we're here to do a job. And, and at Grendon, we're here to to deliver a psychotherapy. And at Spring Hill, we're here to deliver a resettlement regime. And that's, that's, what, that's what my staff do. Um, so I, I know you have to be politically... On both sides, I don't have to be. I no, love you don't. I do. <laughs> I could be completely partial and a total fanboy <laughs> of the work and of Spring Hill as well. Like I say, I've been to other prisons, so. Um, but it is um, important to get a message out to the public about the thoughtfulness, the professionalism uh, of people who work within the the secure estate. Yeah. Uh, and the yeah. importance that you put into your professional roles and the importance that you sort of put into keeping society safe uh, and people need to know that I think yeah and that and that is at the crux of it you know we work with some of the most complex um, dangerous individuals in the system actually but they 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 do leave here much in a much better state and more likely to contribute to society than when they came and they are less likely to hurt anybody again and actually, if we, if we can do that, then we've done our job. That's it, isn't it? That's that's the point. Um, look, just stay there. I'm going to say goodbye to people. I, I, I hope people have found this uh, insightful and instructive and understandable, particularly in our current climate. 
um, where there's a lot of misinformation in, and um, this is about giving people real information that's um, important to the way we live our lives. Thank you so much for coming on. You stay there. I know you've got to get back to you. I'm just going to finish the recording. Um, do send me messages. Um, I, if you've got messages for the governor or for Anna, uh, WhatsApp them to me, and I'm sure I'll manage to find a way of getting them to you. And if they can respond, they will. Um, just want to wish everybody well um, and um, on your journey this evening. And I'll see you all at the next show. So bye-bye for now.